Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Kios Value Working Group meeting of January 13th, uh, first meeting of this year. So first thing in the agenda is fair metric, which saw Sean was supposed to give us some update, but he is not here. So we can, if anyone has any update, we can proceed or we can skip that. Yeah, I don't have any update on that. Okay. So the second one was uh, Stephen was supposed to share academic OSPO and OSPO collaboration or something that was in the agenda in the last meeting. So, um, I can I can do some quick updates, I guess. Um, so we we are getting our um, meetings set together with Anna, right? Anna's going to come to our first meeting in February, and. Probably with some of her team. I don't know if that's made it beyond that in my emails, but uh, Anna runs the DORA project, DORA community, D O R A, Declaration on Research Assessment. And they received a $1.2 million grant to work on metrics and analytics and build a dashboard and a, a mm. toolkit, which often seems to me a bunch of texts and boilerplate to talk about how to talk about these things with people versus building software tools like we need to say a toolkit. Um, so they're in that process. They had a couple of meetings and I shared a bunch of stuff with you folks from those meetings, some links to some documents that they've been talking about. So she's gonna come and we're gonna have a, you know, Here's what we do, here's what we do, conversation with them and see if there's um, ways in which we can support each other's efforts. Does that cover that well enough, Matt? Yeah, I think that's good. It might be, I would like to know a little bit about like, do you know where the funding came from? And yeah, they, they named the foundation. I can't remember it off the okay. top. Um, but it's, it's right on the website. Um, if you drop in your favorite search engine D-O-R-A space T-A-R-A because their dashboard effort is called Tara. Um, you should be able to see the stuff there. Okay. And, and, you know, I think folks should really look at the organization, if not, if not the overall organization's website, which is pretty rich, um, at least looking at what they're doing with Tara and where they are and what the production timeline is. Um, they've, they've contracted with some group that builds their website to okay. the actual dashboard stuff. Okay. Um, well, we can certainly help. I think we've been having conversations like we can certainly help with any metrics that they'd like to develop. Yeah. My hope is, is that, and we can talk about this when, when she's on the call, but like, that we're not developing metrics in two different places <laughs> that we're not doing like it doesn't right. make any sense if we're all interested in health and sustainability all right and so it's the arcadia foundation matt okay i don't know them acadia arcadia arcadia here there's the press release here i will drop that into the notes where the word arcadia foundation is okay here. Okay, thanks. That's the press release. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Um, and then the other piece that kind of relates to this is the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine and doing the larger open scholarship open science community of practice. They haven't picked their first meeting yet. Originally, they said it was going to be February. Now they're leading into February or March. Um, but I do know from conversations with them that they're up to a list of 60 some odd participating uh, organizations mm -hmm. um, that, that span the range of, of R1 to, to R4 to teaching colleges yeah. to HBCUs. Um, there's four 
there are four presidents who are driving this ship. And one's the president of Hopkins, one's the president of ASU, one is the president of a small liberal arts college that I'm blanking on, and one is um, the president of one of the HBCUs. So, and apparently one of the big delays in picking a date is trying to find a common time and four university president calendars to <laughs> set the first meeting. To get together, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if-, if Are you part of that group? So you... I'm, I'm RIT's rep to that. Okay, so can so you'll be the, like the liaison for right, kind of right. Okay. I will I will certainly you know make mention of this and you know Hopkins is obviously going to be there as well. So okay, Saeed may mention you guys as well, but I will certainly talk about. Okay, I think one of the important things in like these I've been finding in these types of conversations is kind of expressing that. Like the work we do in chaos is to help like document what people need. Like we don't know what people need, but we have processes by which we can document and share the work of others. That's what we do. So like our list of metrics is not, you get the idea. It's not like some like single idea from some single person that's it's based on the community listening to what people are talking about. And, and need to see, <laughs> and we document that. Right, and, and I, I think I communicated that in the okay. email between you, me, and Anna, right? You did, you yeah. definitely did. So I will do, um, I will do the same thing. Okay. There, you know, it's not clear, now that I know there's like 60 people coming in to this first meeting at least. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know how much, any one entity is going to be allowed to say in the first meeting. That's true. Um, I would anticipate, knowing that there are 60 people there, none of whom know each other, that they're going to ask us, ideally ask us, rather than create on their own, some kind of directory document where there's a paragraph or two that people talk about what they're doing. Okay. And, you know, uh, under the RIT is developing mystic and, you know, it's part of the chaos community. I, I may get to stick that sentence in my bio and put sure. some of that, right? That, you know, that's probably all we'll be able to do. The first oh, yeah. Meeting. You're certainly not going to be talking about what metrics to develop in yeah. that first meeting. <laughs> but I, I think I, I will have the opportunity to say, here are the resources that we use. It seems um, like that's the most reasonable approach. Like, here are the projects out there that yeah. can help that are already doing the work that you're hoping to do. And there is, you know the story, why open sourcing, why reinvent the wheel? When... And, and what chaos does is, is like a bullet in the list of all yeah. the things this nascent group, but eventually what's gonna happen, what's gonna have to happen, is this thing is gonna have to split up into subgroups and yes. subcommittees and working yeah, you, you at that work point. 60. You know, yeah. I will, you know, I don't know whether whether we get to pick pick them or we're assigned to them and whether we can only do one or whether we can do multiple, okay. but certainly anything touching on, you know, analytics and metrics of, of academic performance is certainly I'm going to try to get involved with that. So. That sounds good. It sounds quite similar to like the Oscar plus plus stuff. Like there, there's like some uh, like administrative and infrastructural work that's needed to be done over the first year before we can even talk about yeah. like connecting with, for example, the chaos project to document the metrics that are critical in that space. Like, but, I mean, it seems like in OSPO plus plus a lot of the conversations early have been about onboarding new universities. <laughs> They've <Yeah>. been about <laughs> like just creating a cohort of people first. Yeah. Yeah, and, then, and, and, and that's good and appropriate work, right? Oh, it's great work. But like we're the Chaos Project is more we're more in the details than like the implementation details of this is what university OSPOs want to see to help articulate 
whatever the RPT process or how software plays a role in that. Mm -hmm. And um, then we can talk to folks like you and say Carlos at UC Santa Cruz and the folks at... Um, yeah, yeah. UC Santa Cruz isn't in that list yet, but they're going to try to get... They should be. So what what ha well the the challenge is is that um, the president of the university engaged has to sign on to commit to certain okay. things, and so it's they they have to sign on that yes my university will engage in these practices I will make sure this work gets highlighted across the university, and here is the person who's actually going to do the work, right? Okay. So Carlos and his folks came to say, oh yeah, we'll, do, we'll go to this and represent Santa Cruz, right? They have yeah. to convince their president to buy in and then have him designate them. Gotcha. Um, so, so just as, as a, to, for like Elizabeth and Vinod, I think at least this is how I'm seeing a lot of this academic engagement kind of playing out is that like in the corporate space, OSPOs are obviously way further along. Like they're they're old and they've been around for a while. And we work with a lot of corporate um, corporate partners and community members who are at the point where they can ask pretty detailed questions about community health. And those questions could be around DEI. Those questions could be around like, like value, or they could be around risk. You know, whatever they might be. Um, so because they've had these OSPOs running for whatever, 10 years, you know what I mean? They've, they've been around and so they're, they're at the point where they can ask these types of questions. In the university side, it's it kind of feels like it's where the corporations were 10 years ago. Like they, they're they just forming the OSPOs. Now. They're just coalescing. And to ask a question like, what is the specific metric or metrics model that we should have? It's it's like the it's too early. To be asking that question like there's there's formulation work that needs to be done so from a chaos perspective my guess is that we like as as steven has been keeping us super well posted we continue to like yep. embrace and listen to that conversation and be ready <laughs> when when the request comes from the university I suppose Stephen you might have a different approach on that but that's kind of I, I think that's in terms of where they are that's right I think where the pressure is coming from though at the end of the day won't be from open source in and of itself right it's it's coming from this trickle down of the academic and research world really pushing much harder on open everything and then as a byproduct saying we need to rethink how we measure and reward yes. work in rpt because a lot of you know we have to incentivize people to do the open work that isn't all driven at just getting an article published, right? yes and once that question is it like the front of people's mind that how do we measure this? That's right. when we step in. And I just don't think they're there yet. Well, so it depends on who's there, right? Different universities are in different places. And Dora, Dora's been around for, I don't know, I don't remember how long when they first were, I mean, they first were just a group of people who got together to write a declaration which is the, the main, you know, right on the website, um, to say, this is broken, right? So it's, what's been happening is that there have been small, smaller groups like Dora and some universities, especially in Europe or elsewhere, who have been trying to act on and putting up different models of how they're gonna get away from just um, journal articles and conferences, and yeah. models, right? And, and there's there's all these different models on the website and stuff. So there's been this kind of 
various splinter groups, individual universities, occasionally an entire university, a university chain since they're state driven, not independent in some countries, right? So there's been this undercurrent of people saying, hey, we need to fix this. There's been lots of people trying to fix it. DORA has been one of those groups. They started in 2012, right? Saying RPT is broken. Mm -hmm. Now here comes the, and, and at the same time, the people interested in open science, open research, whatever, depending on who you talk to, the whole open science process has been around for 15 years, plus or minus five, right? And it has been in the space where it's been, yes, intellectually, I totally agree with this, that says professor, whoever, but I don't have the time to cycles the push for my university to actually do this stuff, right? So open science, a lot of it, and this is a very broad statement, but across the overall world of academia, it's kind of like the belly of the cat, right? Everybody thinks it's a good idea, but most people don't do anything. Even though they've had things like the Human Genome Project and other things pointing to the fact that, you know, it's a really good idea, right? right? So, so now, <clears throat> Now the governments come in and the funders come in, they start to put some weight behind it. And now here comes COVID. And COVID has just accelerated everything, right? So this NASM effort started three years ago with the round table. And the round table issued its report in its two pager and then started this next set of meetings. So we're actually in a space where suddenly Lots of people in academia want to talk about metrics, right? And it's not going to be with an individual. <clears throat> While some of it will be individual, this like NASM effort is in part because there are lots of things on their list in terms of how do we fund this stuff and how do we do these other things. And But the RPT and the metric stuff is in that. So you're right in that um, it's, it's early days. But there's now a huge push to start really actively. Well, so it's that, kind of it's yeah. kind of hockey stick, right? Yes, and when that push really like hits the road, that's when we step in. Like we don't, we're not part of those early conversations in the chaos project. I no, don't. But I think I think your opportunity to be part of those conversations is the next twelve to twenty four months. And I that's think fine. This yeah. Dora thing is a really good start. No, I, and I totally agree. It's it's when this needs to become like on paper and yeah. in practice. That's when we show up. That's my take. And so. and God willing, in the crypto prize, um, I will be able to send out a save the date in two to four weeks for a conference up here <clears throat> in September. Okay. Um, well, get people together. I mean, I'm calling it a conference. It won't really be like a deliver prepared papers thing. Yeah. Um, but but to get people from the open science world and people from the open from the OSPO world <clears throat> together to figure out what the commonalities, the differences are, and what they can each learn from each other. Okay. Um, okay. Sean, did you have so, a comment? You were unmuted. <clears throat> um, my only comment is that I, I kind of, and I agree with a lot of what Stephen is saying. Um, I think our our involvement is it, there's in our in our engagement with open source scientific software map. We saw a lot of diffusion and reluctance to for scientists to go under a single umbrella or to have a foundation that promotes what they're doing, and so. I think the decentralized structure of research software work is in opposition to efforts to um, count it more completely. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, the only thing holding me back from getting going on this, <clears throat> save the date and then starting to try to flesh out what this thing could look like is, um, 
I'll get C funding probably in the next two weeks because the university won't let me, um, the, the university won't sign contracts for hotels and stuff around a conference until they know the money's in the bank to start with. Of course. So I think I will have that chain of events completed by the end of this month or first week of February. <clears throat> All right. And then, um, then I'll start being able to work on that. Maybe we can come. Well, that would be that yeah. would be my hope. In fact, <clears throat> because you folks and your experience um, in metrics in general, <coughs> Sean said, um, talking about your experience in the, the scientific software realm. You know, I I envision this is like a day of, of essentially panels and people setting the groundwork and a day of people getting together to kind of discuss what needs to be worked on where and who wants to try to kind of form working groups to get it together. Um, ideally with the opportunity for organizations like chaos, if they wanted to table right to spread the word about the fact that they exist to these groups of people that are start trying to make all these decisions um so i i see a, a real reason to put you know should everything work out and chaos want to you know places on panel for the run session or something is, yeah yeah we could explain what we do and how we can help yeah and once cool. it's once it's um once I've got contract signed, hopefully, um, see, if, you know, I'll be able to pursue more money for stuff like travel funding and stuff like that. Okay. Well, come us in. Cool. And it looks like I've never been to Rochester. Sean has. We can go to a Bills game, perhaps. Well, what I can, I can, I can't promise Bills game, but what I can promise is this will be my fifth conference I've held in Rochester if it, if it works out. And there are always two required components. One is a reception at the Magic Center, which is our $30 million multimedia and film and game production studio that we built a couple years ago, um, which is a great toy place to come see. And the second one that's required is a two or three hour appetizers and run around in the strong National Museum of Play. The museum of what? Play, the oh. largest collection of toys, games. Uh, you told me about this before. You told me about this when we we were in New York. Yeah, and this is were... my um. I, I have a, a, a scholar in residence position there, and it's cool. And I'm right. not sure whether by no no by the fall it won't be ready. We're going to be building out another edition for more exhibits that won't be ready, uh, but. Even the exhibits that are there are pretty sweet. Right on. <laughs> and that 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 include that that usually includes tours through the archive areas, which uh, friends I have taken through have said it's like walking through the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the endless warehouse goes on forever, and it's just toys and dolls and board games and video games and et cetera, et cetera. Count me in. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that's right. my um, the, museum of, the museum of play is not where play goes to die, right? It's a celebration of play. It is a, <clears throat> it is a celebration of play. Um, they their philosophy is, despite the fact that their holdings are way more massive than what's on the exhibit floor they try to put as much stuff that can be engaged with with the general public out right so in terms of the arcade machines and the pinball machines they have have hundreds and the ones that aren't too rare that have to be preserved just for scholarship so the scholars can research and they're always rotating in and off so there's always an arcade there's video game machines everywhere there's it's a thing you can you can put a link in the notes if you want to i don't know 
but um, <laughs> it's it's a good place. Measuring the activity of open source community by chaos metric. Project talked about. That's the next item in our agenda. Cool. So, I don't know so this is a, yep. So this is a um, metric that was brought forward in the Asia Pacific call yesterday. Okay. And Sean, you seem to kind of understand what the angle was here. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, I think the, the most interesting or critical part are the ways that they are weighting different types of engagement down here. So um, <clears throat> count of D0, which I don't know what that is, but I guess those, those first three are activity metrics <clears throat> that are, exist in the literature by the looks of it. Um, and then there's org count, uh, issue count, common frequency. So these are all different things <clears throat> that exist, different kinds of engagement, and they are weighting them, which I've advocated for over a decade that you need to weight things. So this has great face validity um, in my view. <clears throat> the one critique I had of the visualization that Matt's showing right now is it's just a pie chart of the top 10. And I think it would be more interesting if it was a pie chart of the top 10 and then a, a, a pie piece for other. So we had a sense of what proportion <clears throat> this top 10 is of all of the engagement. So there are, I think, 91 SIGs in Open Euler, and they're showing the top 10. And I'm just curious what percentage of all the engagement that <clears throat> constitutes. Yeah, so their their angle um, was that this, this community has a bunch of different SIGs, and they're trying to and Sean, correct me or Elizabeth, too, correct me if I'm wrong, is that they're trying to get a handle on which of the SIGs are active and which of the SIGs are just kind of hanging out and not doing anything. And right. They have these weightings to help make that determination. <clears throat> so they've assigned basically value in terms of the relationship between certain kinds of engagement and community health, I think. I think that's what the weighting is accomplishing in this case. Yep. <clears throat> So from this, if I can conclude, we have a project popularity metric, but the direction I'm seeing in this document is it's moving towards a model rather than a single metric and taking different atomic metrics as a part of this project popularity as a model. Yeah, so I mean, this is comprised of, like Sean said, I don't know what D0 through D2 is, are. Yep. Um, but yeah, so contribution count, pull request counts, <clears throat> comment. Yeah. And, and in our metric, we have a list of uh, atomic metric that we have referred when it was left. Say that again, Bernard, you broke up. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm saying when we develop this project popularity metric, we have those like downloads, clones, and uh, searches in that. So different individual metrics that were referred as a way to assess a project popularity. I'm going to pull that up really fast. Yeah, I, I posted the link in the Oh, did you? In the chat? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> So this, this section from one to 13 has like folks is a metric or change requests, new issues. These are atomic metrics which were developed over the period of time. When this was this metric was developed, those were not the metrics. They were like, okay, how we assess this, this is how we are assessing it. Right. And so this is, I mean, it's it's actually looking at this, this is actually a uh, yeah, model. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what it what it doesn't do is, I think, thoughtfully, is th this example that you're sharing on the other tab is operationalize the relationship between different types of engagement. No, it doesn't. And, <clears throat> yes. and, and project health. So I, I'm not sure that the metric proposed is actually project popularity. I think that might be a, a translation. I think it's more like a mind share metric. 
because the way that they're weighting uh, the, the atomic metrics in this case seems to um, <clears throat> be biased towards, in a, not a bad way, but biased towards investment level. What does so, mind share mean to you? What does that engage, mean? Engagement, like okay. organizations and individuals are actually spending their time doing work to keep this project going. Like project engagement, maybe? Yeah, yeah, similar to project engagement, but okay. <clears throat> it's an authentic investment. It's it's less flyby, less flyby, more sustained engagement. Okay, so so one then... more comment I need to add here is like the way they have done the weighting. I created like a year back a similar issue on the value working group, where the same thing was done for the business side of it, like <clears throat> business rating review model, where they have taken a bunch of metrics, weighted it, and used it as an assessment or way of measuring the health. I'm trying to uh, find out that issue. To... <clears throat> yes, here is it. And the issue number is 108. It's similar, but uh, it that is a, yeah, that is in a different, as, uh, aspect, but it is a similar thing. <coughs> and this is not a metric. No, this was proposed as a like uh, thing to be looked on in a value working group, but then it got delayed and the okay. metrics model before we had a name for it. Yeah, yes. I'm starting to wonder if like one of the things yes. we're we'll doing in 2022 is taking a look at our released metrics. Yes. Like this and saying, you know what? This was before we had metrics models, for yep. example. You know right. what I mean? And saying we should actually move this out of the value working group and into the model working group. It doesn't really right. need to change. I mean, yep. we would just have to template it as a model. Martin, which is, yep. Which is okay to do. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering how many metrics are actually Remember, we would, Sean, we would call them like composite metrics. And yep. not, that was yeah. the yep. technology yes. we would use yep. before models existed. <clears throat> exactly. So it sounds like business readiness would be a model. Yes. Popularity would be a model. A model. And then Sean had suggested. I don't know if I can, I don't, I don't think I can edit this. I can't. Um, mm. The project popularity might be best named. Oops. I call it project engagement. Yeah. Just in terms of this, I think I said mind share, but engagement is also a valid word. <clears throat> okay. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to think of what, it, let's see, the result, does anybody have a problem with taking perhaps <clears throat> what are composite metrics that were developed a year or two ago that are in reality metrics models? Does anybody yeah. moving them out <clears throat> of a particular working group? and calling them models? I think it would be easier to maintain and sustain them if they were classified that way. Because yeah. whenever a group focused on these atomic metrics hits them, it's like hitting a buzzsaw. <clears throat> so project, okay. And then what was this other one? Um, business uh, readiness. Yep. And uh, I can add, like one was we develop a social currency metric, which also seems to be model rather than atomic right. metric. <clears throat> well, that would solve that problem of not having, well, the problem is, is like, as we move, hmm, so a model, at least in my mind, is based on defined <clears throat> metrics. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. The last three words got swallowed, Matt. A model what? Is based on defined metrics. So a metric model is a combination of, of metrics. So for example, yeah. to Sean's point, like this metric is really a combination. So therefore this becomes a model. Yeah, we had called them composite metrics previously. And really only at the end of 2021 had we decided to start creating models, which are yeah. of metrics. The challenge is, is that as we, I don't think we want to create models that are based on metrics that we don't have defined. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we don't want to say here's yeah. a bottom up model. rather than top down, right? Yeah, we don't want to yeah, say here's yeah. the model and here's all the metrics that constitute that model. We haven't defined any of those. I don't think that's a good approach. <laughs> I think yeah. we need to only use metrics that have a definition. But yeah, I, agree. I, I guess this approach is being used in app ecosystem working group uh, where they define, okay, here is what we want to see. Now they're developing a metric. Yeah, and that's, not, a, that's not what yeah. we're doing in the metric model. Yeah. That's why yeah. perhaps an app ecosystem, but... Yeah. So then if we, so for example, if we were to, to move project popularity out of here as a metric and create it as a metric model, right? like we don't have a metric for, I don't think, a defined metric for downstream dependencies. We, we have a dependency metric in the risk. Oh, is it released? Yes. Oh, okay, well then. Do we have clones? <clears throat> I think we have clones clone and fork, fork and clones metric in the work, uh, common working okay. group. Yeah, uh, for uh, it's either in common or evolution. Yeah, common or evolution. I don't know exactly the whole working group, but okay. I, I've developed those metrics. Like, so I guess the so then at that point, the if this moves out, which I think it should, we would just need to revisit this list of thirteen. Yes. To say yes. we only include we only include the metrics that currently exist. <clears throat> Plus we could so if you these. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, that's popularity. Never mind. So go ahead, Bernard. Even even if you look at this list, four are already as a new metric in this. <clears throat> there is a link to this four of these. Organization <clears throat> diversity as a metric, new contributor as a metric, new issue as a metric. And we're out. Okay, so then then I'm okay with this as long as we have like existing published metrics that help. Yes, we have. Okay, because like we all know too that any of our definitions are not perfect. <laughs> They're a way to just kind of locate people in understanding project popularity. Okay, in this case, yeah. Like there may be other metrics that could help in popularity, but. Yep. This is a sample list. Like, here's here's an example of things that can help you understand popularity. All right. Um, okay. So, so then the suggestion is to move this out of value and into right. Yes. We have to. Revisit the implementation <coughs> only link to existing. Yes. Is everybody agreeing with what I'm writing here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. The project engagement. This would be a metrics model. Again, only linking to existing chaos metrics. Um, it, there could be a possibility like in this one where we could, like I, well, I don't, well, I'm with Sean, I don't know what these are, but like this seems like a small backfill in the sense of we could advance this as a model <laughs> And then if these are atomic metrics, have a working group just kind of define these. Yeah. Just, I, it's yeah, not a yeah. big deal. No, or it's, it's, yeah, I think we can define a certain atomic metrics if they're needed. 
yeah it, it, model i don't especially if it's only like three two or three <clears throat> and if exactly. a lot of metrics i don't know how closely related these are but remember how like we have metrics that are like elephant factor and bus factor like a, some yeah. of those metrics are just kind of copy and paste <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> they're subtle differences yep. but they're fundamentally the same okay um agree <clears throat> To configure metrics to round this model out, and then business readiness. Should we just move this issue? Yes. To the model. Could you do that, Vinod? Uh, I I cannot because I don't have edit access to the metric models working group. If I get then I can move that. Off. Okay. Um, I can do it. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have thoughts on any of this? Seems reasonable to me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. So actually, that that's helpful. Thank you. That's all I needed for project popularity. It resulted in three things. So. Yep. So what about social currency? Are we moving it to a model, or because? To be honest with you, I kind of want to just remove social currency. Okay. At this point, can you put the link to social currency in here? Yes, just give me a second. <clears throat> yeah, it's in the league. yeah, go ahead, Sean. It's in the league of extraordinary complexity. Yeah, my concern is is like it's one thing to define a few metrics like this. You know, if we have the model and we have to spend a little bit of time defining some of these what they call parameters. But my concern is, is that we've had we've had the definition of the atomic metric and metric currency on the agenda for a while. You know what I mean? And we haven't done it. <laughs> That's my problem. I think we renamed it as a social listening rather than a social currency. Okay. Well, it's 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 actually the way if you really look at it, it is composed of other it's like metrics models of metrics models if you dig into it like it's turtles all the way down so we need a new working group called meta models i, I prefer a new working group <laughs> called turtles all the way down we'll do yeah. <laughs> yeah, turtle it club has, it has like sentiment and all kinds of other stuff in there too yeah. i'm just not i mean honestly if this is computational mysticism. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of. There is a lot of really good stuff in here. I'm just not sure that it fits how we're structured around yeah. metrics and metrics well, models. That's my well, think, my concern. There's. I think my concern is there's about this metric has always been that it has a lot of good ideas, but within that good idea or within each good idea is additional complexity. So. It is it's a, it is very just complicated and I think hard to operationalize. <clears throat> you know, in the case of in the case of most of our metrics or models, I can explain it to someone in a elevator pitch. I, I can't begin to do that with this metric. Well yeah, I, I had to get training on this for like days. <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't quite understand it hundred percent. So yeah, agreed. Okay, I'm gonna at least kind of put something out there. We should um, that we honestly that we remove this as a metric. Yeah, I don't think it, it's a metric. Well, because at this point, <clears throat> what we're settling on is that metrics are atomic measurements. Right. They are right. singular yep. metrics. Models are collections of those atomic metrics. Right. And that's that's kind of where we're settling. So it makes sense. But 
but the only concern i have i'm fine with removing this but we uh, we just want to retain this because it has a lot of <coughs> ideas that we can refer them in the future as we evolve agreed but we'll just have to do it not on the website yeah. and as a yeah. Yes. Yeah. metric that's my so maybe we can keep it as an issue or something I, i'm not sure like how we handle this It, it seems to be more like a, a, a philosophical mm -hmm. structure point. I don't know if that's an issue, whether that's a discussion yeah. in a general chaos meeting or, or what. Just to let you know, we are at the end of the time. Okay. All right. Then see you next time. Yep. We'll carry this in the next. Right. Discussion. <clears throat> see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.